hanging out here at Meek's Patch, doing a bit of editing, getting some stuff all figured out on the boat. And the wind kind of has shifted to the point where the waves are starting to pick up, even though the wind is pretty mellow right now. The waves are just kind of wrapping around Meek's Patch here. And uh, since the weather's gonna be nice for the next few days over at Egg Island, it's pretty much gonna be not protected either, but at least we'll be over where we wanna be for the calmer weather. And it's also supposed to switch more out of the south, which is kind of the direction we're gonna need to go tomorrow. So we might as well head over there now. We'll be beating into it a little bit, but it won't be directly downwind. So we're gonna pull up anchor, go anchor over there, and spend a few days at Egg Island. Hopefully do some fun diving. Alex is feeding the fish. Oh. I've never thrown that that much in my life. Maybe because you were trying to do some back end stuff on YouTube inside the boat Maybe. and we're bouncing a little. This is nice. We're like beam reach, kind of sail all the way to Egg Island. I've got a feeling. But the current is a little bit against us, so we're only doing four knots. Meh. It'll be wet an hour and a half, maybe. Oh, this is kind of exciting, leaving Meek's Patch. I mean, it's a beautiful island, but there's so many power boats that go there. Especially on the sunny days, it's just non-stop. And they drive right next to the boat and send huge wakes, so it's not the most comfortable and peaceful. So let's just get out of this power boat madness, tourist madness, and go to Egg Island where it should be way calmer. We'll see. Stand on the opposite shore Hello I reach the mysterious ceilings My holy hope I look for the things I don't know Very peaceful, not too swelly And it's on the beam, I was wrong we're not beating into it, so that's perfect. All in this Show me where the I should be the last All in this Show me where the I should be the last Almost there. Got a couple other boats over here, which is totally fine, but uh, it's not a very big anchorage, so luckily there's only a few and it's not packed in here. kind of lifting the anchor so slowly drift back so oh my god this is exciting look at this you can see everything We found our one nice little patch of sand and there's corals all the way around us. Welcome to Egg Island, sweetie! Woohoo! Cool little spot. And it should be nice. It looks like the visibility is way better than what I expected after all the wind. Let's go for a swim. The holding here was great and in sand if you chose correctly. But it's always a good habit to dive under the anchor to make sure it's well set. I have to say though, we've been loving our anchor. Who's 
excited! I'm excited! I'm excited! And who needs a swim platform when you've got a dinghy in the water, right? I'm more excited for tomorrow when we'll be diving the reefs that we tried to go to last time but it was way too bumpy. This is the best feeling ever. When you get to dive right off your sailboat without even having to jump on the dinghy to get to the reefs, it's the best. And we were surrounded by corals. It was a perfect way to use the last hours of daylight. As we kept on snorkeling, I became surrounded by hundreds of these little jelly balls. I think they might be called sea gooseberries, but correct me if I'm wrong. That was so much fun. There's like so many beautiful corals right off the boat. It's perfect. And I'm a little cold and I'm really hungry and Cory wanted to keep going. So I left him out there and I'm just gonna start making some supper. I way prefer being here than at Mixed Patch. So much more peaceful, serene, good food, and snorkeling was so much fun. I'm excited for tomorrow. We only got a little bit of a taste of it because I was really hungry, needed to come back to the boat. All geared up and ready to go. Come on in. We're way out in the middle of the water and I just dropped the anchor and it looks super deep. Corey's really excited. I don't know about myself. <laughs> it looks really, really deep. And I've been floating back up to the surface more and more, and I'm not enjoying wearing a dive um, a belt anymore. So it's gonna be interesting to say the least. Well, let's see how deep it is.
Some fish just seem to know that you have zero interest in shooting them. These Almaco Jacks wanted to play around and could have made an easy meal if we were really hungry. Since I tend to avoid shooting fish that have higher chances of Secretera, a toxin that builds up in reef fish as they eat other smaller fish, this toxin can affect us as it builds up too much. Very similar to metal poisoning, it doesn't get broken down and leads to long-term effects. So we stay away from fish like barracuda, jacks, parrotfish, and typically avoid larger snapper. A full-grown fish has much more time to eat toxic fish in its lifetime. Oh, that was awesome. Not a whole lot of fish. I saw one, one hogfish early on. But I, when I first get in the water, I'm all, my heart rate's always up quite a bit. I'm all nervous and excited. And um, so I, I, I dove down and I was out of breath as soon as I got down there. But my last few dives, I really felt pretty comfortable. I felt like I could stay down there for a while. And I just measured and it was 60 feet down. It's my deepest dives I've ever done. I equalized like 15 times on the way down. Let's go find another piece of reef to check out. hogfish I've ever caught and it was a deep dive roughly 40 feet or so and I just went down and shot him right right stone shot right behind the gills he didn't even move an inch as soon as I shot him and there was a lot of sharks around so I'm glad he didn't freak out all, all small sharks actually the sharks were only a little bigger than him so <laughs> man <Wow. sighs> the more I do this the better I get I'm super impressed with my fillet that I got here. So there's the fillet, and you can see all of the, the bones here. I cut around the rib cage pretty much perfectly. There's barely any meat here. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty, pretty happy with that. Now I gotta try to complete the same thing on the other side. But that's, that's bone there. There's not even a touch of meat on the bone on the top part. I missed little slivers here and there, but, but I'm super stoked on that. Since I try not to eat too much fish, Cory took off and invited the whole anchorage for food. We loaded up the dinghy and headed over to the beach to gather firewood. Well, I am getting a little bit of stuff ready for a little cook up on the beach. Prepped some butternut squash with onions and a bunch of herbs. Should be good. It'll be fun. Well, time to have a beach fire. We invited everybody in the anchorage pretty much to, uh, for a fish fry. I'm gonna start a fire and uh, hopefully have some good food and make some new friends. It was great to mingle with so many different cruisers with such different backgrounds and boats. But we all shared a love for the cruising life. 
We had a French family, which I finally used my French with. Then a German family, quite rusty with my very limited words. And a few American couples. We talked about our different sailing adventures and shared some tips. As soon as the sun sets and there's no wind, then no CMs come out. So it was nice to have some smoke from the fire to keep them at bay. One thing we learned that evening is to always make sure that your dinghy is tied well to your anchor. Because if it wasn't for some of the kids on the beach, someone would have lost their dinghy that evening. But luckily it drifted into some rocks nearby and we could grab it before it got too far. The fish was delicious, and it was a great evening making new friends. And Judy is doing some video clips for each of the flavors. Are you not so not having a YouTube channel or something? Yeah, maybe I'm telling you. I had no more. No, if somebody was having trouble with those things, right? With these really calm conditions, we headed out to the cut between Egg Island and Royal Island. A friend of ours told us that there was a drift dive there when the current was going out. There was enough current to push us but it wasn't as strong as current cut. The bottom was mainly grass and kind of boring, but all of a sudden a tractor had appeared in front of us. This was the last thing I was expecting to see. We wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side our fears are done. All the good times just begun. Oh, we know what we have, let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy, but things are finally right With you and I, the future is bright oh. After our drift dive, we decided to return to the deeper reefs. The more I dive and look under rocks and coral, the more marine life I see. This time I spotted a small nurse shark who seemed to be taking an afternoon nap. Welcome Charles to our wild guardians. Charles from SV Marisol really means a lot to us that you're willing to support our videos. And for anyone else that doesn't know what Patreon is, 
There's a the link in the description down below and it gives you access to all of our videos before anyone else. There's a few different perks, a little gift after a year of subscribing to us. And there's also other ways of supporting. If you don't want to pay every video, you can send us a one-time donation through PayPal. But really, the best way to support our channel is to like and share our videos. It doesn't cost you anything and it really helps us a lot. Thanks, Charles.